welcome to another episode of Insufficient Friends. I'm Kevin. She's Nikki. Hi. And Nick, it's been a mm-hmm. couple weeks since we did one of these. How was yeah. uh, how was your week? Not, not that you guys haven't seen one, because we put one out last week, but we haven't actually <laughs> talked in a couple, well, besides texting in a couple weeks. But how was your week? Yeah. It was fine. Just work. <laughs> how was the softball? Well, didn't you do a softball tournament last week? Yeah, okay. since we moved back, I've been um, helping again with USA Softball, which I love. So, okay. yeah, it was good. We had we had a tournament this weekend, and I worked it. Um, yeah, it was good. It's fun. That's good. How was your week? Uh, it was pretty good. Um, I just kind of been working. It really hasn't been anything special, but, you know, it's... Mm-hmm. It, it is it, it is what it is as as we yeah. say a lot of times um you sent me a couple things because uh obviously you know oh, we, don't wanna, send you? we don't want to we don't want to get I don't like, remember what I sent you we don't want <laughs> we don't want to get we don't want to get like bogged down we are thinking about the people you know with hurricane Helene and all, all that going on but um, yeah. we don't want to get too bogged down with that, but when it was first happening, you sent me two things the day before and I didn't respond to them until a couple of days later, but one was about how mm-hmm. Disney deals with their animals in a hurricane. Oh yeah. And yeah. the other one was if, what, what did it say? Hold on. I got to look this up. Cause there was a specific thing that it said exactly that you sent me right before that. It was, Oh, is it the one about guess if, yeah. If, if you, you send this to your ride, friend, right? yeah. yeah. Where is it here? Okay. It's it's a picture of a floor, the f- yeah. of the ground, <laughs> and it says you'd get a million dollars if the person you send this to can guess which Disney ride this is from. Who are you sending it to? <laughs> she sent it to me, and I, I mean, as soon as I saw it, which again it was like a day or so later after she or the next day after she sent it, but I told her what it was. It it's not yeah. you know. <laughs> I know this, and I got a laughing emoji response was the only thing that yeah. I did. So where's our million dollars? I got a million dollars. Yeah, so where's the million dollars, <laughs> and how much of it do I get? I, I would split it with you okay. if it were real. <laughs> I wish it were real. That'd be nice. It's not. It's kind of like those uh, um, things on social media where it's like, um, if if you were to get $5 million, would you sell a family member? And our agreement always was with either my husband or my brother, like, I would sell you, but then I would buy you back and we'd split the money. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Like, uh, why would you not do it? You yeah, have I mean, enough if you money can... to buy them back. They're probably not worth that much. If you... Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> not $5 I'm, million. Dollars. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sorry to uh, your brother and husband that <laughs> they're not worth okay, I mean, we're being realistic here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, but anyway, uh, I think you said you we didn't have any shout-out, or we didn't have any shout-outs online, like anything on Instagram or anything. But we did have a comment yep. on um, one of our shorts on YouTube from this week, and then it's from Joe Ooh. Ward, Z2K is the username. Uh, Joe, thanks for thanks for commenting. Um, thanks. And it's talking about the Beatles. He says one of the reasons the Beatles made such an impact in the in '64 was because of uh, partly because the U.S. was still mourning the assassination of JFK a year earlier. Mm. Um, and he says that it was uh, the Beatles were a breath of fresh air, and that he remembers um, that happening because he was he was there. So. Thanks, Joe. And that is interesting. I kind of... Yeah. I mean, I know that JFK was assassinated in in, in 63, mm-hmm. but I didn't really think about that also being tied into to, to the Beatles and that, that happening at the, the same culture. time. So that mm-hmm. that makes a lot of sense, though. Like, um, Yeah, it does. JFK was a, a beloved president, and, mm-hmm. you know, anytime something like that happens, it's obviously a gonna, tragedy it's a yeah. tragedy like um and we haven't i mean he was the most recent we've had assassination attempts um on other presidents but he was the most recent one to actually be mm-hmm. uh, be assassinated so um to yeah, be killed absolutely. and something like that yeah. and and there's still a lot of controversy over 
what exactly happened and everything else too. Still to this day, even though that was, mm -hmm. well, I mean, what is? Yeah, that? I mean, there's that's... whole college courses yeah. on all the conspiracies. Yeah, uh, around it. Yeah, sixty years over sixty years ago now. So that's you know, it is mm -hmm. a interesting um, thing. But we may have to do an, a story yeah. on that. I actually went to. Uh, Ooh, I'm gonna add that to our my um, senior topic year. Ideas. After my senior year in high school, some uh, me and some friends went to Dallas. We did a road trip to Dallas to see a couple concerts, and mm -hmm. um, we went to to uh, Dealey Plaza and saw uh, like we stood on the the grassy knoll and kind of yeah. looked around there <laughs> and stuff. And it is it's a really interesting like thing. They just they have two x's on the street where the car was when he was when the when he was hit by the bullet so it's mm -hmm. it's an interesting thing to see if you're ever in dallas to just go see that area and there's a couple of museums and stuff mm -hmm. there too that you can go see but anyway yeah. this week interesting not what we're talking about this week off on a <laughs> just just yeah. completely off on another tangent as we normally are for the use uh yeah, yeah pretty much um so this week we are actually talking about um Ancient Egypt. Mm-hmm. Because we thought that thought would... you forgot our topic there for a second. No, no. I just had to, I just had to think for a second. Um, I'm trying to do other things, too, because I'm trying to mess with yeah. the sound. But anyway, Ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. So, it's... This was always... So, I know we've talked about this before. Um, our different Roman empires. Mm -hmm. Growing up... Um, I was very fascinated with yeah. ancient, like I would go and check out, you know, the books on, on the different pharaohs. And, um, I think the mummification and, and the pets and, and things like that were always very interesting to me just cause it's so different from our modern culture. Mm -hmm. Um, so this was one of my Roman empires growing up. That makes sense. Um, I, it's amazing how advanced they were i mean mm -hmm. for being one of like second really to only mesopotamia the oldest like advanced civilization in history yeah and they were pretty advanced yeah. i mean when you think of their mathematics their language their writing it and architecture yeah it is pretty crazy to think about well, and you see, like, um, I mean, all these buildings are still... You know, we talk about the Romans being advanced. And the Romans the Romans conquered the Egyptians. That's where they... Mm -hmm. When the Roman Empire kind of started. But the Egyptians were around yeah. for three, almost 3,000 years by that point. Like, that was a long-lasting mm -hmm. civilization as well. Like, 3100 yeah. B.C., to like 300 mm -hmm. BC. That's almost 3,000 years that it yeah, was Yeah, and if you count it as like when Cleopatra fell, basically, and then the Roman Empire officially, you know, it, it that was it. That's 3,100 to 30 BC, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Yeah, which is 3,000 yeah. years. That's, that's just insane. Mm -hmm. Like, I... There has... We've had less time since that empire has fallen than that empire mm -hmm. was around, which is yeah. crazy to yeah. think about. Like we are closer to, and I, I just say Cleopatra as a, because everyone knows the mm -hmm. name Cleopatra. We are closer to Cleopatra than we are the start of ancient Egyptian culture, yeah. which is one of those timeline, you know, yeah. screws with you. Yeah, we're we're closer to her than she was to the start of ancient Egyptian culture. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it is. Which is crazy um, how it was it around for so long. Yeah, it's so because it's divided into like different kingdom timelines. Mm -hmm. There's like thirty dynasties of rulers. It's just absolutely insane. I was looking at like a timeline of the different pharaohs and oh my, there's so many. And there's so many that we probably don't even know about because they're lost to time, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we can only find so much, you know, evidence of everything, but just absolutely wild. And and then it was also kind of mind blowing how often they were invaded too. Oh yeah. Um, like the the Nubians, the Assyrians, the Persians, the Macedonians, the Greek, like, it just, 
because they were around for so long they had so many wars yeah which I is also crazy i didn't i guess when looking kind of looking this up i didn't realize that either like it it one, a couple of the places that I looked at talked about them being conquered multiple times, which is interesting because yeah. I don't, I don't think of it as, you know, the only time I think of them being conquered again is when the Romans kind of ended their civilization and took over because mm -hmm. all the other ones, it's just like, well, they just kept going. Like, it's just, yeah, it just kept going. And I was, I was noticing that too. And then I was thinking, well, why was it so... Why were the Romans so detrimental? And then I was like, well, maybe because the others were still maybe like a similar religion. It mm -hmm. was just a different, you know, setup. That is, but then the Romans and when they converted everyone to Christianity, um, Christianity, yeah. I'm like, well, maybe that was the kicker. That is that one truly of the ended. One of the things that I I saw yeah. seemed to be a theme is that it was a a big part of it was going from the the um, polytheism. polytheism of multiple yeah. gods to the the Christianity thought of of, of one god, but yeah, um, yeah, and that is that's just a difference, you know. But I again, maybe yeah, I is. don't know if that is actually the reason, but yeah. that was the thing that stuck out to me because everything else seemed like just a different like culture leader, not necessarily a different whole mm -hmm. entire setup. Yeah. Um, but then I was reading about, you know, the different successes they had, obviously agriculture around the Nile river. Um, and that, but I didn't know that they mined like a, a lot of minerals and, and things like that too, in the, in the desert, but then also reading about like their writing system and, mm -hmm. and trading. It's, it's crazy. I mean, this was a massive culture. Well, and also just the, um, the fact that they, like you said, they, they would do agriculture along the Nile and then other parts of the country, like in the desert, they, that's mm -hmm. where they buried, that's where they buried everybody, you know, they, and they built yeah. these massive temples, like the great pyramids that you can still see to this day that mm -hmm. are thousands of years old. Um, now yeah. they eventually got away from that because, uh, they kept getting grave robbed and they didn't like that. <laughs> So we mm -hmm. did, we did change yeah. eventually. But um, even just like the thought of the architecture and the beliefs they had. Mm -hmm. um, and there is some, well, from like the, the reading I was doing, it's not research, just reading. Um, I guess some scholars still debate like what the actual purpose of the different pyramids were. And a lot of them say they were truly meant to be tombs that like guided you into the afterlife. And then some were, are like, no, they're not tombs. They're just architecture. But I'm like, they are tombs. So we don't, there's yeah. some, I think that they don't really know. But in general, it's like they wanted, you know, their, because their pharaohs were very much like the middlemen mm -hmm. between the, the gods and the people. Well, yeah, because a lot of the pharaohs basically were treated as gods mm -hmm. and they kind of seen, saw themselves as gods as well. But um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Those, the, and go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, go for it. Oh, I was just reading the... Okay, so the... Because I wanted to know more, like, what they actually believed, like, religion-wise. Because mm -hmm. I are, I always knew they had different gods and the different gods and goddesses ruled different things. And, and you know, we all have kind of got the gist of that. But then I was reading about, like, more into their um, belief of death and then the afterlife, too. So... They thought that every human had Ka. I don't know if I'm saying all these right, but Ka, which is like your life force. Mm -hmm. And then that left your body at the time of your death. But each person also had Ba, which is like your soul almost. Mm -hmm. And then they thought that um, that's the part that remained attached to you after death, but that it could like walk around and so that's why they put so much belief into the afterlife as well because they really thought that the the ba the soul could like move freely okay um and that's why they had so many tombs that had like their their animals and their board games board games were a big thing one of the queens i think it was nefertiti anyways there were several of them that were buried with like their favorite board games because they fully believed that you're in a different form. You're just up and walking about mm -hmm. after you pass away. Yeah. So it was really cool to read the different things about 
what what they actually believed about the afterlife too yeah and i don't know because i haven't done a ton of research on it but everything that i've ever seen of the pyramids um because again they're they're massive structures and they're they're I mean, mm-hmm. basically, the only thing they are is a tomb. I mean, there's not really, you yeah. know, they they put a bunch of their treasures because they all wanted to be buried with their treasures, and that was all for the afterlife and things like that. But there's not there's not a lot of open space in them, from what I've seen. Like the maps I of know. them and stuff, it's very, yeah. it's. I mean, there's chambers in them, but there's not like, it's not mm-hmm. like a big cavernous thing. It's very just full of stones it's very solid from what it looks like which is interesting and Mm -hmm. i've just never under i guess the whole reason for them being large is because you you know showing off your status i guess and stature i I would be the only thing that i can come up with. well i'm sure it's kind of similar to um (laughs) i was about to say the wrong quote I was about to say Dolly Parton's quote of the higher the hair, the closer to God. <laughs> I what I meant to say, like how, um, you know, like the reason churches have steeples because, you know, it's, it's an honor to, mm-hmm. to God and things. Um, that's so it true. could be that same idea. Yeah. That's, it's, that it's is just true. glorious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I don't know, but that, I always found that interesting because most of the maps that you see, it's like, it's like a, it's this massive pyramid and then it's like tunnel, tunnel, room, room. And that's mm-hmm. it. Like it's, it's like two yeah. or three rooms that are very small in the, in the like map or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's, and that's it. It's just, they're mostly just, which I'm sure even back then or, or to build it now would be difficult to build something that size and that heavy without making it mostly just a solid yeah. thing. But mm-hmm. the fact that they were able to, to do that is just to do that it is is crazy yeah um and i know like i have a hard time separating in like actual archaeology versus movies and things but yeah i tried to look at those maps of the different tombs to it it's it really is wild like how they actually completed these things and i guess still some of it's unknown how they actually completed some of these Mm mm-hmm yeah um but you talked about alien sky (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um you talked about uh when you were a kid you used to mm-hmm. um look you know like t- check out things about the pharaohs and stuff like that mm-hmm. what did you have a favorite pharaoh i was always fascinated by nefertiti and that makes, I, mean, I think that makes it's sense. just so i was trying to look up like why king tut and nefertiti were so popular and it's from what i can tell it's basically just because in 1922 like that was the foremost archaeological discovery so everyone just knows that because it yeah. was discovered in modern day there's like there's thousands of well, hundreds if not thousands of pharaohs but I think, nefertiti was always one that i read about so nefertiti was i mean considered to King be Tut's one of it was a stepmom yeah it was, not it was stepmom, no it was basically. mother-in-law you're right yeah it was a mother-in-law mother-in-law um, something like that it, there was so much incest in that family. His, his wife was um, her daughter. King yeah. Tut's wife was her daughter. Um, but yeah, I think part of it... his half-sister. Yeah. yeah. And I th- I think part of it is that... Um, uh, like you said, King Tut was... he. It was, it was one of the more recent discoveries, one. Two, mm-hmm. he was so young... When I mean, he was nine years old when he became, when he became Pharaoh, which is insane. And when, um, one of the things that I was watching on this that I didn't realize is that because we, we kind of talked about like the big pyramids, they stopped doing that more because of all the looting from the grave sites. His tomb was one of the only ones that have ever been found to be like fully intact with all the artifacts still in it. So yeah. there was thousands of artifacts in there that he was buried with that were that were still in the tomb when they found it. So those are all yeah. in a museum. Now they didn't ever from what I understand, and I know we talked about this in the past cuz I talked about a pharaoh not, not not knowing where pharaohs are or mm-hmm. where they're buried. And there's there's five big ones that are still kind of not known from what I found. And one of them is not really a pharaoh, but 
Two of them are related to King Tut, and that's Nefertiti. They've never really found her tomb, knowing for sure that mm-hmm. it's hers. And then his wife, who I can't pronounce her name. <laughs> her, Nefertiti's oh, um, daughter. Um, Ankesan Patan? Something like that, yeah. I, I'm sure. really good at languages. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't... Um, both of them, they've never really found their tombs. But we found yeah. King Tut's. They also, at, at one point, I feel like I heard a, 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 a theory, and I don't know if this is a mm-hmm. conspiracy or if it's actually true, that King Tut's grave, what they thought was King Tut's grave, was actually Nefertiti's grave, and she was actually the one that was bare. Like, mm-hmm. there's a bunch of things on that that I've I've heard before in the past because they think that he might be buried somewhere else, and they mixed it up or, or something because I think they died around the same time or something. I, there yeah, was something weird with that. Yeah, they did, but I, I think they had done DNA testing. Okay. Um, which, I mean, they're all in the same family line, so I'm sure yeah. that's also complicated because of all the... Well, yeah, because he was married to his... He was married to his half-sister yeah. anyway, so... like. But also, because he was so young and his bones were so brittle and he had so many health issues, I think they were able to identify that it was him because... There was another theory that he had died um, by hippopotamus because Mm. there was like in the, um, is it a cat scan or however they scan, you know, to see everything that's in the sarcophagus. Yeah. Um, Part of his body was like missing in the middle. And then they were like, well, that could, that's probably from like a big trauma. Mm -hmm. And then it was in um, some writing somewhere that he really liked to go like hunting and things and, and. Hippopotami? Is that the plural? Hippopotami? Hippopotami? Yeah. Hippopotamuses? Yeah. Hippopotami- I, don't think, I don't think hippopotamuses is correct. <laughs> hippopotamuses were one of his favorite things to hunt. <laughs> okay. So there's lots of... It, it's so hard to... With, with archaeology, I'm sure it's hard to distinguish a lot of things when you're working with just making hypotheses about things, basically. Yeah. It's... um. I don't... It is just crazy with that. Um, mm. Yeah. But yeah, pharaohs in general, were they were always very interesting to me. Um, and then reading about how, you know, the Egyptian people, some saw them as like gods on earth versus some saw them more as kings, which I found out in, in reading for this episode, pharaoh is, is like a vernacular term. It's not necessarily what they called them. Most Mostly, it looks like in writings, they just called them, regardless of gender, just king or, or some version of that. Um, and then I was also doing reading more about how they were the middlemen and, and what exactly that meant from, like, relaying messages from the gods to the people and, and keeping order on earth. And then I had a really stupid thought that, <laughs> like, the um, we love stupid pharaohs were, like, Barney Fife to Andy Griffith, like, the pharaohs <laughs> to the gods. <laughs> because they're basically just like an extension of them kind of Mm -hmm. and so they keep order and balance not that barney fife kept order and balance at all no he definitely that's what i thought of is is that i was trying to decipher what they were saying yeah (laughs) (laughs) by the way this is another tangent that i was thinking about the other day where Mm -hmm. did you is that is that where you got your dog's name opie's name from is from Andy Griffith show. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of what I think. You figured. know how Opie in the show is like very, he's smart, but a little ditzy sometimes because uh-huh. he's a kid. Yeah. Um, and he just wanders off sometimes and, and just does his own thing kind of. And I was like, yeah, because it was between Opie and Fitzwilliam. And I was like, my dog is too stupid to be named Fitzwilliam. I need a smart <laughs> dog for that. So we went with Opie. And okay. Opie's so cute and okay. still lovable. <laughs> I, I know. I just, I didn't ever think about that until the other day. I was like, yeah. I wonder if that's where that comes from. Because I don't know that we've ever really talked about the Andy Griffith show, but <laughs> okay. It is. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I love the Andy Griffith show. <laughs> it is It is a fun show. It is a fun show. Mm-hmm. Anyway, back to our um, regularly scheduled. Yeah, back uh, to ancient Egypt. Egypt programming. Um, it is. You know, I I know my dad's favorite pharaoh, maybe the only one that he actually knows, I don't know, was King Tut. 
Um, because I know yeah. he wrote a paper on it in high a paper on King Tut in high school, oh. and I'm pretty sure he told me he used the same paper two years in a row for for classes. So he <laughs> he uh, yeah, you know that's it's one of those one of those things. I I don't know that I have a favorite pharaoh. There's you know interesting things about a lot of the big mm-hmm. name ones. A lot of the you know yeah um like. The other ones I can think of are like Ramses the third. Second was the big one. Second, I think. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Second. He was the one known for like the big architecture pieces, the big structures, mm-hmm. things like that. Um, yeah. King Tut is obviously one, and one of the other ones that I saw. Um, speaking of going, kind of going back to the not being found, they it's mm-hmm. he's not actually a pharaoh. He wasn't actually a pharaoh, but Alexander the Great is like what took down obviously the, the yeah. Egyptian empire, but they apparently don't know where his, where he's buried. He was moved so many times after he died that they don't know. Where oh. he's, they don't know where his body is anymore, really. So, um, interesting. Uh, and that's where Alexandria was obviously he, he he's the one who founded Alexandria, but, um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it's, I, I don't, Egypt is just such an interesting, there's so much to it. And of course we're not going to get that far into it because, we're insufficient. And we're not professors. <laughs> no, we're insufficient. We're not yeah. professors. There's people that just do this, like just this subject for a living. Um, mm-hmm. And there's so much, so much to it. Um, there is. I yeah. I would love to visit Egypt to mm-hmm. see some of this. My yeah. only problem, and this is a problem that Egypt's had for a, while, for a little while now, and it's not gotten better, mm-hmm. is that, I'm I'm afraid to go there because of kind of the part of the world that it's in, and it's not necessarily the safest place to go all the time. Um, yeah. You never know what's going to happen. Um, I would love to visit though to see these sites mm-hmm. and agree. and see the museum. They're actually building a well. It's almost finished. From what I could tell, it's mm-hmm. not quite open yet. It's supposed to open this year. There is a museum called the um, Great. Egyptian Museum, I think is what it's actually called. Um, mm. Where's it at? Grand Egyptian Museum. Um, it's, I think, over a million square feet. Um, because mm. the museum that's wow. been housing all these artifacts for years is, is just old, and it's, it can't do it anymore. It's not big enough. But they, I saw a thing where they talked about how they're trying to move all the artifacts through the city to this mm-hmm. new museum. Um, it was announced... Several years ago, I remember seeing a big video on, like, this big thing, and, you know, but it's supposed to have a ton of, um, a ton of artifacts. Yeah, it's con- started construction in 2012, so, and it's, oh, wow. it hasn't opened yet. It's supposed to open <laughs> this year. It's been delayed several mm-hmm. times, but it was, last, last I saw, or when I was looking on here, it says that it's late 2024, so... I don't know if that's changed, but everything that I could see said late 2024. So Yeah, that'd be interesting. I also went to visit as well. My grandma visited. Her and her sister went. Mm-hmm. Um and and they loved it. I mean, that was one of their favorite because they used to go on a lot of trips before my grandma passed away, of course, and uh they would always travel together and, and they loved it. But they went during a time where it was very safe i mean i i don't think they had any um men with them i think it was just them from what i can remember from stories and they didn't have any issues but and i've seen other people go there and it's been perfectly fine oh i'd have to do research because and i'm such like a i want to figure out the local culture make sure i'm not you know i i want to be respectful um, and all that yes yeah, respectful mm-hmm. and, and assimilate as much as possible if being an American and everyone hates us Yeah, um, because we're so culturally uh, inadequate. But, um, you know, I like to do my research and, and make sure I'm following their culture and being respectful. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely have to do a lot of research for this one because it's so different yeah. from our culture versus like going to Britain is, is pretty easy. Yeah. So. Um, well, yeah, yeah, because we're basically them. We came directly from them. Um, yeah, exactly. Do you have a, because I, I do, do you have a mm-hmm. favorite um, monument 
or favorite yeah mm. monument let's go monument do you have a favorite monument from like ancient from ancient egypt yes okay i think it'd be the sphinx okay only because it's a pet makes sense <laughs> Not really, but yeah. It's I, what about you? I've never, you know. I was watching a video a little bit ago. It's it was like mm -hmm. a National Geographic. It was a National Geographic story that they just did relatively recently. Came out or posted on YouTube. It shows all of these places from the air, from like a from like aerial view, and it shows yeah. the Sphinx. And I never really noticed how out of proportion it is. Um, its head mm -hmm. is really small and its feet are freaking huge and it yeah. looks awkward <laughs> and I'm not sure what to think about it. Cause it's kind of weird looking. Um, it is mm -hmm. very interesting. It is very, um, very cool looking. My favorite though yeah. is, um, is, I don't know how to pronounce this. I can't pronounce any of this stuff. Like I'm not, I'm not perfect, but yeah, we none of us can. are perfect. We're insufficient. Abu Simbel? <laughs> is that it? Near Abu Simbel temples. Yeah. Okay. It's oh, yeah. it's the mm -hmm. one on the Nile yeah, that it. has like the four the four like yeah. um dudes sitting in chairs. And yeah. and like I just looked it up. I've I've seen that those. One. Yeah. That's probably my favorite. I think it's the coolest. Mm -hmm. I think it's the most interesting cuz it's like carved into the side of a mountain and it's just these massive um, statues of, mm -hmm. I guess those are supposed to be pharaohs. Is that I'm I'm thinking that's what they're supposed to be. Um, oh, it, oh, this is the one that um, Ramesses the second did. Oh, I don't I think, know. Is is it? I I'm think not so. Really sure. Yeah, I think he was he was the one that ordered that to be built. That may be. Like I said, he was mm -hmm. he was one of the ones that was known for, um, the. Uh, um yeah the big monuments and the everything. big monuments yeah um <laughs> i i also like the different um symbols and and when someone you know shows a picture and then they say like this is depicting a war i love being able to you know interpret what they were doing and and things like that so mm -hmm. that's also cool to me is just that the symbology is so huge in their culture in, in ancient Egyptian culture. Yeah, they were. You're right. It was Ramses II who was who was the one who who ordered those to be built. And it looks like there's several of them, actually. You, s I've only ever seen the picture of the one, but there's several different mm -hmm. ones, it looks like, all, yeah. all kind of next to each other. Um, yeah, I love how it's just like he did well in battle one time, and he's just like, cool, now build me a temple. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what they did back then. Like, that's to just, kinda, I know it's, like, it's awesome. It's, it's awesome. baller. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also the, like the idea that they were able to make something like that 4,000 years or 5,000 years ago is yeah. flipping crazy. It yeah, is, it is definitely. insane. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I think that is. Oh, one of the things that I did did read on this, or that I did see on this too, mm -hmm. is this is also apparently like we talked about religion and how the Romans kind of changed it to Christianity. This is also mm -hmm. uh, Egypt is where the oldest still operating monastery in the world is. It's Saint Catherine's. Ooh. Um. On Mount Sinai, which Mount Sinai is where God reportedly appeared as a, as a burning bush, and Moses got the the Ten Commandments and, and all that is what they said in this. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know my stories. <laughs> I I don't know my stories either, but that's what I'm going off of. Um, it sounds right. It sounds good. <laughs> so like I, you know, it's in yeah. the middle of the desert, but it's mm -hmm. it it's been around. They've had he one of the monks that they talked to there says that they've had continuous prayer ceremonies at this monastery since the mid-6th century, which wow. is kind of a long time. But anyway. Yeah. Um, Very cool. Unless you have anything else, I think it is time for facts. Yeah. Facts. Uh, 
But uh, Nick, what is your mm-hmm. is your fact? Is your are we going to keep the streak going? Is your fact to do with ancient Egypt? Because because you know. Yeah. Okay. Good. Kev, I've been doing well for like you... six months now. Okay, I think we can end the jokes about me having bad facts. <laughs> they were never bad facts. They just didn't have anything to do with what we were talking about. I know. I know. <laughs> anyway. Um. Yes. Mine's about the ancient Egyptians. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, well, pretty much everyone knows this, that they kept a lot of pets and, and animals were very sacred. But this was interesting. Um, they had specifically trained, uh, so whatever their version of police officers were, I don't know the name for them. Okay. But they had trained dogs and monkeys to help them, you know, when they were out on patrol. Um, I think it was baboons. They're like super trainable, just like dogs. Hmm. Well, some dogs, not my Makes dog. Makes sense. They, you he can't know. be trained. But... <laughs> They trained monkeys um, also, and this was really interesting. The dust powder that they use, you know, nowadays on, on like, CSI Mm -hmm. and also in the real world, not just on TV. Yeah. (laughs) um, To do fingerprints and stuff. That is called Egyptian blue is what we call it. And that was actually produced by ancient Egyptians. Hmm. Interesting. I thought that was interesting. That is interesting. I don't... Yeah, that's very interesting. I don't... Uh... The baboons is interesting. The baboons is really interesting. The dogs I get, because mm-hmm. we still have police dogs today. But, I mean, yeah. training a baboon, that... that I mean, monkeys are really mm-hmm. close to humans in, like, evolution ideas. So that, yeah. that makes sense that they would be, you trainable. know, trainable. I mean, obviously, yeah. we've had gorillas that I would also just do sign I language, should have done so. more reading on their, like, police setup. Because mm-hmm. I do like reading about how different cultures approach, approach um, like, law enforcement. Yeah. So I should have done more reading on that. But, yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's all. That is an interesting concept, too, because law enforcement is not. It's not something you, that I think when of. I say law enforcement nowadays. I just think of the TV show Cops. But like, I would love to see like what that actually looks like in ancient Egypt. Yeah, because I don't like. I don't think of it being. I think of law enforcement being more recent thing in in mm-hmm. like history. But I mean, you would have had punishments back then, obviously. But I don't. Yeah. I don't know how they would have carried that out and 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 well, and especially out, but... because the ancient Egyptians placed so much value in order, mm-hmm. order in the universe. Yeah. So they had to have had a pretty advanced system, whatever they did. I just should have done more reading on it. Yeah. Well, we're insufficient, so you know, that's what it yeah. is. Um, my fun fact it has to do with Ramses II because that's apparently. Uh, from what I'm from what I'm finding just today, that must be my favorite pharaoh because I don't really know. Yeah. Like I didn't even really. I mean, I've heard the name, but it didn't really stand mm-hmm. out to me. So obviously, I'm a fan of his architecture. So maybe that's my favorite pharaoh. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. so in his mortuary temple, so I guess the temple that was mm-hmm. built to um, that he had constructed to honor him after he died which mm-hmm. was a common thing among among a lot of pharaohs but in his mortuary temple which you can still go see today like a lot of these like a lot of these locations there is the remnants still of a statue of him it's not standing anymore when it was fully standing they say uh it would have been the height of a six story building and weighed a thousand tons that is Holy a cow. big flipping statue. Mm-hmm. I, again, don't know how you build something that big back then. Especially, yeah. like, the pyramids I can kind of get because you can, like, build it up from itself. But a statue mm-hmm. is not... A statue has to be vertical. It's not like a, mm-hmm. you know, it's not like well, that type of... Like- that's a crazy tall, like, um, wasn't the statue of David carved from, like, one block of marble? marble? Mm-hmm. That, but, yeah. like, how do you do that with a massive freaking statue like that? I don't know, because you wouldn't, I wouldn't think you'd have a big enough piece of stone, because where it sits is not, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not, like, surrounded by mountains, like, you could just carve out everything else around it. Like, that's not 
where yeah. it really is. It's kind of on. Yes, it could be done in layers, maybe. I, I would guess it would have to be like you would have to just stack a bunch of stones on top of each other and then carve yeah. out that. But even still, getting mm. those stones stacked seems like a crazy task. Mm-hmm. And and I mean I know they I mean I know they use slave labor and things like that, which is you know obviously a terrible Actually, thing. Actually, that's but... been disputed. Not saying that they didn't. I'm I'm sure that they did. Almost every culture has, but. Um, they found a lot of like graffiti that was like, um, hinting towards that they were, there were a lot of paid laborers, hmm. um, because there was graffiti about different, like people arguing at work and it's, <laughs> this is like ancient graffiti Yeah, and people were That's mad. Like this guy at work, I was mad at him for this. And so I, <laughs> that was kind of funny to me. I was reading and they were like the, um, modern day, um, Archaeologists are actually disputing how much, you know, slave labor actually went into it. And because it seems like they're finding a lot of evidence that there were a lot of paid laborers as well. So, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Um, I, I don't, I don't know, but that is, yeah, you're right. That is interesting. I guess I didn't realize that, um, also, and this is going back to the whole, um, pharaohs and things. I didn't realize that King... Tut's tomb was in the Valley of the Kings, mm-hmm. which I know is like, is a very, like I said, a lot of those big like pyramids and things stopped being made because they were being looted. So they built the Valley yeah. of the Kings, which was kind of hidden in a mountain. It's a, it's a mm-hmm. mountain shaped like a pyramid, which was pulled on purpose is what they say. But it's, you know, there were all, all the entrances were hidden and everything. So they wouldn't mm-hmm. be looted. Now, most of them still were, but there's like... 60 something i think they said grave sites that they found there um which is crazy i mean it's right it's right off the nile and you can go visit a bunch of them you can go see um king tut's uh tomb uh there still today so Mm -hmm. that's yeah you know that's stuff that i would love to see it oh that would be yeah that would be awesome to go see stuff like that Mm -hmm. um but yeah I think that would cost a lot of money to get over there and we didn't make it safe. So instead, we're just going to go to the Renaissance Festival tomorrow because (laughs) that's something we can attain. (laughs) Yeah. Renaissance Fair. Yay. That'll be next week's episode. So uh, don't forget to join us for that. Um, And don't forget to if you if you had fun today, you know, like, subscribe, comment, and we'll give you a shout out. And if you want to hear something we've talked about it before, if you want to hear us talk about something else insufficient, insufficiently, um, let us know because otherwise we're just going to talk about whatever we want to, which this was one of those. So, um, thanks again for watching. Thanks for, uh, like subscribing and, uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.